thank you so much, Duncan. Um, Michael Holmes from Neo Farm, the CEO of Neo Farm, as well as um, Tyrone, Managing Director at Neo Farm, please join me in, on stage. Um, so cannabis is definitely a new kid on the blog. Um, this industry is definitely one to watch out for. Um, President Cyril Ramaphosa, during his State of the Nation address earlier in the year, actually said uh, the government would review um, policy as well as the legislative framework um, for this industry in order to industrialize it as well as um, commercialize it. So this industry is uh, valued at 28 billion rand. Uh, it's been identified an industry that has um, a lot of growth potential, obviously also because of its ability to contribute to economic growth as well as um, job creation. Uh, research from the World Health Organization actually points out that South Africa is the third largest illegal um, cannabis grower in the world. <laughs> with about 2,500 tons um, grown per year in South Africa. So this means that there are already farmers, you know, actually um, farming these products and earning an income from them. So um, Tyrone and Michael are here today to unpack all of these opportunities within this sector and, you know, to just explain to many of us where the um, legal framework is and how um, we can benefit from actually um, joining this industry. So maybe just to start with you, Tyron, could you just um, please give us an overview of where we are in terms of uh, the legislative framework um, for cannabis in South Africa and to also maybe um, say what is legal or not and maybe just to explain what the difference is, you know, between camp and cannabis. Good afternoon. There we go. I know everybody's half asleep. Yeah, I'm also half asleep. It's been a long day. But if you guys can indulge us, we would greatly appreciate that. And knowing that all of you are small farmers, there's a, there's a pun at the end of it, which I think you guys will be intrigued about. The cannabis market in South Africa has a lot of red tape, especially the medical market, which we're in. We're in the medical realm of cannabis. And we've exported some cannabis to Australia. There's a lot of red tape that comes from it. And it's up to the people at the top to get rid of the red tape and legalize it. As you guys have just heard, most of our cannabis is illegal and it's going out of our back doors. Why doesn't the government at the top legalize it and tax it? By taxing it, we're going to bring revenue back into South Africa. We can start dispensaries and we can support our economy. Thailand's doing that at the moment. They're making a billion US dollars a month just by taxing cannabis. We need to get into that realm. You guys are all, yeah, trying to get into a realm. Cannabis is a great opportunity and so is hemp. But on the grounds of South Africa and our regulations, I'm... I was hoping to sit down with the minister, but she flew by me, so I didn't have that chance. But I tried to grab her and say, legalize, legalize, legalize. <laughs> and she didn't allow me. But the bottom line of it is, we're Neofarm. We're a THC medical cannabis facility based in Cape Town, Franchuk. We grow via hydroponics, as you guys call it. The Americans call it deep water culture. That is how we grow. We're the only cannabis facility licensed in South Africa who grow via deep water culture. I did have a video, but for some reason they'll play it tomorrow, they said. So if any of you are here, you'll see that video tomorrow and you'll see how our facilities run. It's a two minute video and you'll be quite intrigued by it. But it's a very diverse market and it, the opportunities are all there for all of us. It's why we are here. We are here to help and see where we can help the people from the bottom up. And I'm sure Michael, the CEO of Neofarm, would like to have a say as well. Uh, thank you, Tyrone, for that. So, Michael, um, how does one start a cannabis business in South Africa? You know, in terms of costs, in terms of compliance, in terms of um, infrastructure, the whole process of setting up. 
you know, as well as um, getting the licensing and the permits that are required for you to be able to be established. How do you go about that? Uh, thank you, Karabo. And I'd like to just say thank you to Food for Mzanzi for inviting us here and for Ivor and his team. Thank you. Um, the cannabis sector that we are involved in with regards medicated cannabis, it's not for the recreational market like all those hundreds and thousands of tons that's going out the country. Uh, it's more for the pharmaceutical and the setup costs that we put into the company standing now at some 60 million rands. 60 million rand to set it up. It is extremely capital intensive. That is THC. CBD cannabis, which does not contain the uh, THC molecules uh, and does not have any intoxicating properties, that's a totally different market. That you can set up with a million or two million rand and you put some tunnels together and off you go. There's no problem. There's a f third uh, 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 direction to go and that's hemp farming. Now that's a new direction Neofarm is taking with a sister company called Hemp Africa South Africa. And we're putting a hemp farm together in Gouda, which is about an hour, hour and a half uh, drive north of Cape Town. And uh, that is where I think the, uh, the discussion today on this panel must go, because that is a job creation. That will supply the market. And the beneficiating of that product is not a hard task at all, whereas THC beneficiation from the bud to the oil is a very expensive and time-consuming thing through extraction. You have CO2 extraction or you have ethanol extraction. The extraction machines can cost you anything from 2 to 10 to 20 million rands. A, and, it, and it takes a long time to get there. The, the property, the, the licensing that we had to go through from SARPRA, South, Af South African Health Product Regulatory Authority, SARPRA. That is full of red tape. What we had to first do is we had first had to build our facility. So we first had to spend 40 million rand with no guarantee that we're going to get our license. No guarantee. So SARPRA comes along thereafter We've, we've built our facility, our facility is standing there, and now we wait, hurry up and wait. Eventually, the guys pitch up, they do an inspection, and they find all these crosses that they're not happy with. Now you go and you spend some more money fixing all these crosses. Eventually, they have to come back again to re-inspect. And from the notice period to them coming back can take anything from three to six months. So again... You're sitting with zero business happening, zero cash flow coming in, and you're still paying the expenses every single month. However, I don't want to dwell on that too much, but it's extremely challenging and uh, sometimes very frustrating. But uh, we luckily, we got our license. Thank you, Sopra, for that. And uh, we have received import permits from off-takers, and we have exported uh, cannabis to Australia, and we are extremely uh, happy to have closed that circle from the company to the production to the sale. And, and that, that's a big one in the cannabis market because there's something like about six, seven tons of cannabis sitting in South African licensed producers' vaults in this country, and they cannot sell it. Number one, possibly quality. Number two, the regulations regarding getting your permits and that and the tests and everything that have to go along with it. And number three, the off-takers thinking that they can cut you down at the knees for your product. And at the end of the day, you know how much it costs you a dollar, a dollar fifty to produce that product, and they want to charge, they want to give you a dollar fifty for your product. So you have to find the right off-taker for that. Uh, thank you for that, Michael. So from what you're saying now, it is very clear that um, from the medicinal cannabis side of things, barriers to entry are actually very high. You need a lot of um, capex to be able to break into this industry. Now let's talk um, back to you, Tyrone. Let's talk about the permits um, for hemp because hemp's regulation lies with the Department of Agriculture, Rural Development and Land Reform. 
So last year, October, uh, the, the minister actually said they will be starting to issue permits. So what is the process in terms of that? Because we understand that the hemp industry is the one that is a bit less um, in terms of the capital intensive, which can actually bring more opportunities for you know people who do not have so much money, like the numbers that, shocking numbers that Michael was mentioning. Yes, thank you. So on the grounds of it, the lady that was here today, I really wanted to sit down with her. <laughs> she she flew away from me, but I did shake her hand. And I just said, legalize, legalize, legalize. But a long story short is you can get a permit for 50 hectares, okay? You do run it under an R&D purposes. All of you guys here are small-scale farms. Am I correct on that? Now you're a small-scale farm. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of you. And you do a JV together. Now you're nine of you, take nine by 50. You've got a big piece of land. Then you find somebody who has a co-op, i.e. a decorticator, because you, you have to fabricate that hemp down. It's not the flower that you want, it's the stems. And you decorticate that. Out of those decortications, what can you make? I can make clothes, I can make bricks, and I can make medicine. It's a massive industry to get into. And if you guys are small-scale farmers, look into it because the opportunity is massive. Currently in Cape Town, there's a hotel that was made there out of hemp bricks. All hemp. Completely hemp. It's incredible. It's 24 stories. Full hemp. The entire place is hemp. Even everything you walk on, everything you touch is hemp. It's incredible. So at the moment, we've got a company called Hemp, Af Hemp Africa, South Africa. We've got a place in Choda. The minister over here is, we're waiting on our permit. <laughs> so I've been keep going to her. And uh, a long story short, we're looking at 300 hectares. Out of that 300 hectares, they're going to be growing a fabricator plant there for tinctures. Are they going to be doing oils? And more importantly, they've already got an off-taker for the bricks in South Africa. Everybody that does hemp has to import it. What's the cost of importation? It's a massive cost, guys. You guys all sitting here with land. Start contacting that minister and push the button you want to grow hemp. <laughs> and all that you need is a good seed and put it in the ground, and life and environment will do the rest. And the minute you get that, we're looking at creating a co-op in South Africa because we want to help the people at the bottom. The people at the top have been filling their pockets for too long. They're forgetting about the people at the bottom. That's the bottom line. And we're going to start a co-op, and we're going to get a decorticator, and we're going to get a fabricator, and we're going to buy people's hemp and help people from the bottom. And on that, we're going to look at creating a kibbutz. You guys know what a kibbutz is? It's called a mega farm. We're going to put a school there. We're going to put a church there. We're going to help those people in poverty. And there's a lot of it in Africa. And I think hemp can save Africa. We have institutions in South Africa, and our education is a lot higher than the rest of Africa. Let's use it to branch and take over Africa. But that's my four cents. Sorry, I can talk here for 20 years. You guys will die by the time I'm done. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Tyrone, for that. Duncan is already giving me an evil eye to wrap up. But before we do that, Duncan, please, um, in your opinion, Michael, you know, how can um, this industry become accessible to ordinary South African. I mean, there's currently no cultivars um, locally uh, developed for uh, farmers to access and be able to plant. They have to go through the import market. Also, the value chain is not well developed at this stage. So how can it be accessible to, um, you know, ordinary South African and also indigenous farmers who are already in this value chain illegally? Thanks, Karaba. Are you talking about the hemp, that yes, is? Yes, yes. All right. If I could just quickly, if you don't mind, just uh, carry on to where Tyron uh, was uh, left off. 
what we're looking at as the company Hemp Africa South Africa is uh, uh, leasing a thousand hectares of land from the Gouda Farmers Association. So it's government land. It's not our land. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> And we will put a section together, 10, 20 hectares, 10, 20 hectares, 10, 20 hectares. And that farmer and his family and everybody come and they farm that 10, 20 hectares of him. We will give them the seeds. We will give them the education, the training, everything. And on that farm will be a, 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 a co-op, a huge big milling machine. It's the, 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 the scheme is the same as the tobacco industry. It's the same thing. The tobacco farmer sells the tobacco product to the, and then they make cigarettes out of it. We will buy the hemp from the farmer. So he grows it. We buy it. He already has an off taker at hand. He doesn't have to go looking for somebody to buy his product. We will buy it. We will beneficiate it into those different uh, avenues that Tyron laid out. And then we start again, and there's no fences between the farmers so that that 1,000 hectares can be taken by your, your crop machines and mowed down on that. And we want to get at least three crops a year out of that piece of land. And that's three times the income out of 10, 20 hectares at so much a kilogram. And there is a huge employment opportunity as well as an income uh, opportunity. Right now, this is a brand new industry, just like cannabis is a brand new industry in South Africa and that. But yes, the vision is there of our company and uh, our employees and that. And we see huge opportunities. So guys, if you want to get into you know, the hemp farming, give Tyron a call. He's got lots of time on his hands. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Michael. So let's just wrap up in about 30 seconds. I think you've just said it. What potential do you see um, for the cannabis industry in South Africa? 30 seconds. Tyrone, Michael. In 30 seconds. Yes. Legalize it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. The, uh, the, 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 the bottom line of it is the people at the top need to come talk to the cultivators at the bottom. The cultivators at the bottom, if they get it legalized, all the little coffee stores that you guys see here, they all become little dispensaries. Everybody that's been criminalized for cannabis is out the door. There you go. You guys can have a joint and you can relax. <laughs> Michael? Uh, uh, across the time. Right now, we are exporting everything we can. And as I said, there's five, six tons sitting here in South Africa that's deteriorating into nothing that they're going to destroy because they can't sell it. If our market was open locally, every producer will be selling and making money. And every day, there will be shops everywhere making money. And there will be employment in those shops everywhere. And more farms will be coming up. And, and it's just a beautiful circle that's it's just money, 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 money. Employment, deployment, deployment. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for your input. Thank you so much for your time. You guys had it. Uh, you guys can give Tyron a call. He has all the time in the world. Thank, Thank you, you very much, guys. <laughs>